You know, it's a little complicated, but I'll give you the short version is um, there was a group in town that was organizing a craft and arts school, actually. That was the original vision of that group. And the construction of Sultana was set to be part of the woodworking school. And the way things turned out, that idea just really took off. And it was such an enormous project that the conclusions reached that you really just had to focus on that. So it just became Sultana. It would have been 1996 and 1997. That was when it first started. So we're coming up on our 30th anniversary in uh, 2026. You know, in, in 2017, we added our Holt Education Center on uh, Cross Street, which is a huge new facility for us. And then last year, we added the Lawrence Wetlands Preserve, which is, you know, in terms of what it does for our programs is even bigger. So we've, you know, we've almost raised our staff by 40% in the last six or seven years, and the number of kids that we serve is 150% more than it was in 2019. So a lot of growth. It's both. The ship is both the key component and one facet. So it's the key component in that it's the thing that most people know us by is the ship. It's the most visible thing. In terms of the number of students we serve, probably about just over 30% of the students we serve go on Sultana. Um, we have a big paddling program, we have a big outreach program for schools, and we do a lot here on our campus in Chestertown. But, you know, that's what we started with, and I think that's always going to be the emotional center of the organization. Since, 20, since 20, 2001, when we first launched the boat, we've taken between 105 and 110,000 children on the boat, um, which is amazing. Sailing. The average kid is on for four hours a day. Didn't Obama's daughter come? She did, yeah. Sasha came and went sailing on the boat. It was, it, was, uh, it was a lot of black SUVs driving around, but all in all, it was a pretty normal day other than that. We seem to have a sort of organizational thing of just wanting to make things bigger and better. So that's our goal for downrigging 2024 is to make it bigger and better than any downrigging we've had. We're going to take more people sailing. Uh, if everything goes well, we should take about 1,230 people sailing over three days, which to the best of our knowledge is the largest public sailing event in the United States. We can't, we've been asking people, we can't find anyone who can think of any place else where you take 1,200, just general public, you know, not your friends, not anything else like that, and take them out sailing. So that's, just like Sultana is the heart of our organization, downrigging, the heart of downrigging is the tall ships that come and we have a lot of regular faces, but we have some new boats. We have a cool new boat, Bloodhound, from coming down from Massachusetts, which is a replica of a, I think it's an 1874 racing boat from Scotland. I mean, it's just awesome. Um, and we have a lot of new smaller boats. And when I mean small, a lot of them are actually pretty big. They're like 60, 70 feet. We have a boat, Coastal Queen, which is actually pretty famous. Uh, it was uh, in a book called The Inside Passage, which was, which was a pretty notable book about 50 years ago. Uh, and just underwent an enormous restoration in Newport, Rhode Island, and this is her inaugural cruise. So she'll be here, um, and it, it, the fleet is really impressive this year. You know, the, the, the weekend will unfold largely as it has. We'll have tall ship sales on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. There's also a short open house, which for free you can go on any of the boats, uh, any of the big boats on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, we will have music on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Sunday is free and open to the public, and we have some really great bands. We have Midshore Voices United, which is a big sort of Del Mar of a wide gospel choir on Sunday. Uh, we also have the U.S. Navy band Country Current, which are top-notch performers. Um, I'd say that two other bands really of note. On Friday, we have two singer-songwriters from Nashville, uh, Wendell Mobley and Lee Thomas Miller. And between the two of them, they've written 17 number one records for like Carrie Underwood and Kenny Cheesney and Rascal Flatts. I'm not a huge country music fan, but I even recognize the songs. And people who like country music know all of their songs. Um, I was fortunate enough to have an opportunity to see them play last year. And whether you like country music or not, they are phenomenal, talented people who are also absolutely hysterical. Half of it is them telling stories about why they wrote each song. So that's gonna go longer. That's gonna be a two hour thing on Friday night. And that's different and we're really excited about it. And then on Saturday, we have the Gibson brothers who have won 
They really are the quintessential American bluegrass band. They've won pretty much every single bluegrass award that you can possibly win over 17 years and have played with everybody. Um, we feel incredibly fortunate to grab them, just circumstances lined up that we could get them. You know, we probably have another year or two of really consolidating the growth that we've done the last few years. You know, we have just begun to scratch the surface of what can be done out of the Lawrence Preserve. That's gonna take a few more years. And even with the Holtz Center, we're still really building out new programs there. Um, so, you know, in that time frame, one or two years, we really are quite clearly mapped out. I think the next question for us beyond that is, do we wanna keep increasing our service area? We really have, you know, at this point, Every student in Kent County from pre-K through eighth grade, we see them every year. It's kind of amazing. Uh, the average Kent County student spends 35 days with us before they go into high school. And that's sort of the vision that we had in the beginning is a progression where kids work with us every year. You know, our next discussion will be how much further do we push that with Queen Anne's County and Talbot County and Dorchester County and Caroline County, which are the other counties we serve. By the time people see this, there are going to be very few tickets left to sail on the boats. At, you know, as of today, Friday, October 18th, there are only 100 left. So we'll see how many there are left on, uh, on Monday. And our music tickets are selling very fast, too. So we might actually sell out. Um, but we are looking to welcome a lot of people to Chestertown. We're crossing our fingers for some really good weather. Um, we're going to have the fire pits going. We got some Great brews going down at the Music Village. It should be a ton of fun. So we hope people will come out.